All right, Straight Talk episode two. We're back in Property Turkey Istanbul Studios with uh, Cameron Degen. And in the last episode, we've told you that through this WhatsApp number we have, Fatih, you remember that trick last time? Do it again, okay? <laughs> with this WhatsApp number again, you could reach us. Last episode, we covered a rather, uh, contr rather controversial issue, right, Cam? Rental guarantee. Yeah, rental oh, yes, guarantee, that was, that the gimmick, that scheme yes. that was running around. All right, and this time, we actually scheduled to cover small hotels versus serviced apartments. How do those compare? Because um, you told me that a lot of people are reaching out to you for um, you know, small hotel purchase inquiries, exactly. right? Yeah. Exactly. So we, we, we were going to cover that, but actually we postponed that episode. And today's episode, we're actually covering uh, one of our uh, audience's question. Um, his name is um, Mr. Jawad from South Africa. He reached out to me last night when I was I with know, you, I remember? Know. You, you, re yeah. you read his note to me, yeah, actually. Yeah. So then we, we, we thought, well, let's do a live coverage yeah. of it tomorrow. Uh, Kem, let's start um, with the first question. Now, he says that the... In South Africa's big cities, they receive initial yields of 8 to 12 percent for retail and industrial properties. And he wants to know how does that compare here in Istanbul? Okay. South Africa typically produces rather high rental yields. Mm. In fact, this is one of the kind of issues, let's say, that we yeah. face with quite a few of our South African clients who are used to um, rental returns exceeding 10% mm. in their home country. Um, Turkey is slightly different. We generally explain this to them in sufficient detail. Now, rental return, which is which you can see as the operating income mm. of holding real estate, is rather reflective of the risk of associated with that mm. um, real estate. In fact. It is very much tied to um, the country risk, the political and economic risk associated with the country. Generally, what you find is countries with lower economic and political risk association tend to have rather low rental returns. Mm -hmm. Like when you look at the UK um, and most parts of the US, for example, um, rental returns that you can expect from commercial properties, new commercial properties, um, 3%, 4%, 5% if you're lucky. Turkey, um, although not as low risk, let's say, as uh, UK and other European countries, is still regarded as a lower risk country okay. than countries such as South Africa. Hence, the returns that the market provides to the investor are also lower. Mm. In Istanbul in particular, um, the average rental return you would get on commercial properties, including retail and industrial mm -hmm. um, commercial properties, varies anything from 5% to 7%. It will hardly ever exceed 8%. Yeah. Um, and this is basically an investor coming in today and buying a property today, and we're looking at the initial mm -hmm. first years, let's say, mm -hmm. rental return would be 6 7% on commercial properties, which in fact is pretty much at par with residential properties. Yeah, but, but uh, here's the thing. Um, in Istanbul and in Turkey in general rather, um, although we have five to seven percent rental yields, um, people generally focus on the capital appreciation True. of the property, True. right? For example, um, Okay, I buy this property, six to seven percent yield, but what's going to be the capital appreciation? Because that is also an income, isn't it? You're absolutely right that in Istanbul, capital appreciation is pretty much the target of investors. Mm -hmm. Strong capital appreciation. Your rental returns are modest. Mm -hmm. Modest to high, in fact, compared to many other countries. Mm -hmm. So six percent, seven percent is regarded, in fact, mm -hmm as a pretty decent return, mm -hmm. considering that in major cities in China, people are talking about 1.5, 2% returns if you're lucky. 2% rental 2 returns? 2% rental returns if you're lucky in places like Beijing and other large cities in, 
in China. Where did you get um, that information from, Wang? From our Chinese clients. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's one of the reasons that they're trying to they're trying to exit yeah. uh, uh, exit the chi Chinese markets. I think yeah. with other reasons as well. There, yeah. other issues that they see in the markets. So in Istanbul, in particular, six seven percent rental returns on commercial property are in fact good returns. Mm. But if you look at an investment of say time zero, this mm -hmm. is today that I purchase to time five that's the year that I exit, um, if you've managed to uh, do a good investment, mm -hmm. um, when you look at your overall return on investment, once you have sold, which is your rental income over the five-year period, plus your realized capital growth that you have now banked mm -hmm. into your pocket, um, your capital growth is likely to be significantly higher mm -hmm. than your rental income during that five-year period, which means that the main driving factor for real estate investment in Istanbul is actually capital growth, okay. not rental income. In Istanbul, um, this, is, this is what I understand from it. In Istanbul, the rental yield, yields are modest, and what people really after are is the capital appreciation. True. Okay, good. Now, let's move on to uh, the second question, which is um, a rather important question. Um, in Turkey, Cameron, how would you understand if somebody is a real real estate agent or a fake one? Um, well, for me, it's probably easier yeah. than for a foreign investor coming into the market. Um, but, but generally, to give you a background. Okay. Um, Turkey is an emerging market, and real estate sector is most certainly one of the locomotive sectors of the Turkish industry, as you can see. Yeah. Um, so, because of this, particularly in the last 10 years, a lot of new entrants have come into the real estate market. Yeah. In fact, um, in the last 12 months alone, we counted two to 300 newly set up real estate agents in Istanbul alone. 300 newly Minimum. set up? As you know, we operate sales offices yeah. also, so which means that we reach out to, uh, to, to agents. Yeah. Um, so in the last 12 months alone, we've got two to 300 new names in the oh market. My God. These are people who just came into the market. And when you look at their websites, yeah. you wouldn't know that because it's um, these days it's quite an easy exercise to set up a website and to actually make it look a lot bigger, a lot yeah. more established than what you really are. I mean, you could be talking to a, a home office operator, uh, yeah. but when you look at their websites, you probably think that they have a team of 20 people and they've been around for 20 plus years, yeah. whereas they just set up six months ago. How would you understand that, Kevin? As a foreign for, investor, for, for how me, would I understand okay. that? For me, um, a telephone call and a five-minute discussion would give it away because I would I would be able to test uh, test their knowledge. I'd be able to I'd be able to understand um, the, their level of expertise yeah. in the market over a five to ten minute discussion with them on the phone. However, uh, for, for you to be able to do that, you in the first place need to have sufficient level of knowledge and expertise of the market yourself so that yeah. you can test their knowledge and expertise. Ah. Well, a foreign investor is highly unlikely to have that level of knowledge of the market to be able to do that. So that is probably not an easy one to do. So how would I go about, if I was a foreign investor, yeah. how would I go about um, uh, assessing, let's say, um, a real estate agency? The first thing I'd do is I'd look at when their um, domain name was registered. Now, it's a very easy thing to say. Can you check that? Uh, you can check that. You can go onto websites such as Who Is mm. or domain registrations. Fatih, and, can you put those and, websites and, here? And, and you can, in fact, uh, put in their domain name. For example, yeah. our domain is www.propertyturkey.com. If you put our domain name in, say, who is, you would see that the domain was registered in 2001. Yeah. Which means that, you know, we kind of 
uh, started Elvis estab statement. establishing yeah. our business back in yeah. 2001, and then we grew our business and operations from there, yeah. which kind of gives you an indication that, hey, these guys have been around for almost 20 years. Yeah. Um, so that's number one thing you can check. And if you were to um, sum up all the real estate agencies yeah. operating in the foreign investor market in Istanbul, and you checked up their domain registrations, you will find that at least 90% of them were registered in the last four years, yeah. four to five years, which then tells you that these guys have been around for no more than four or five years. And in fact, probably 80% of all agents out there, their lifespan is no more than three years. Yeah. So you can easily check that. The second thing that I would encourage people to look at is testimonials. Of course, you can go onto your website and write fake testimonials. Yeah. You can do that. Who's to know? But still, if you go and look at their testimonials, and particularly look at the age of those testimonials, how far back they go, mm. that will give you a good indication of um, how long these guys have been around, mm. their longevity, in other words. Third thing I would do is look at media. Mm. Look at media, because a well-established operation, real estate operation, um, if they've been around for say 10, 15, 20 years, they are likely to have some media coverage. And I'm not talking about advertising style, I'm talking more about editorial style, mm. media coverage, mm. where their expertise and their knowledge um, have been, would have been um, consulted by uh, media. For example, if you take us, for example, mm -hmm. you can Google us, you can Google Property Turkey with the Financial Times, with the New York Times, with the Telegraph, yeah. uh, and, and with the similar um, well-known uh, newspapers, New paper, yeah. online newspapers. <coughs> and you would find no less than 10, 15 editorials dating back 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And these are people who from time to time give you a call and say, hey, you know, uh, there's this thing happening in Turkish real estate lately. Would you like to comment on it or what do you think or what's your yeah. take on that? They and, take your expertise. And, and they actually quote you yeah. um, in, in, in quite a serious article. Now, um, that's a very good way of finding out the um, credibility of mm. a real estate agency. And lastly, pay a visit to their offices. Yeah. Just physically go to their offices. Not to meet them. Um, meet the agent not out on the exactly. restaurant or not cafe. Or don't meet them out at a restaurant. Yeah. Don't meet them in some landmark. Yeah. Even if you do, insist to go to their offices because that will tell you a lot. Okay. By, 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 by actually looking at the size of their operation, looking at people who work there, okay. happy faces or otherwise, um, you will, once you start putting all these together, you will have a very good picture of who you're dealing with. Good. All right. Um, lastly, Mr. Jevdat asked if there is a good viable English portal for real estate in Turkey where he can search real estate in Turkey. That's a very tricky one, and I tell you exactly why. Yeah. What he is referring to is a portal. A portal. There, there are a few well-known portals. I mean, a few of them. He actually, he actually wrote in his message one in Australia, yeah. and I think one in South Africa. Um, well, the ones I'm familiar with um, are in the UK are Rightmove. Rightmove is, um, is, a, is an advertising portal for real estate. Zoopla is another one. Um, Prime Location is another one. These are called portals. What they are um, is advertising space. Basically, you can set up a company today or without a company and you can post your real estate on that portal. Mm -hmm. You pay a fee of $100, $200 a month, and you get a slot of, say, 50 or 100 listings that you can post there. The Im most important thing I would urge all investors to realize is that these advertising portals, mm. they may look excellent, and they are. They are very good website operations because they have millions of dollars behind them usually for advertising. Um, so they have deep pockets for advertising and maintaining their websites. But what they don't have 
is any real responsibility or accountability over the validity and accuracy of what's displayed within their portals. That's a good point. You That's can a good post, point. you can go down the road, take beautiful pictures of a property building. Property X. Or property X okay. that you know property nothing X. about. Yeah. And you can post it on Rightmove or Zoofla, put a price tag on it, no one will question you. Because mm. it's not their job to question you. Because they don't vouch for the validity and accuracy of the information there. Because all they are is an advertising portal. Mm. They're not real estate agencies. And when you look through their pages, you see hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of real estate. Mm. And because of the strength of their websites and because of the rich content in terms of numbers of listings of their websites, these portals, they generally manage to rank rather highly in search engines such as Google. So people will um, come on to them yeah. because they rank higher. All I'm saying is, and all I would like to say is, um, be aware that these portals are not real estate consultancies or agencies. They are advertising portals that anyone can advertise on as long as they pay, they pay the fee. So the validity accuracy of the information is highly questionable. If you go onto those portals, I would say as much as 30, 40 percent of the properties advertised on them are probably dead and gone, yeah. sold ages ago. Not updated. Not updated. Yeah. Because as long as they generate leads, yeah. people leave them there. Because mm. the whole purpose is to generate a lead. So you can then call them and say, hey, how can I help you? Yeah. So they are lead generation tools. So they should not be relied too heavily for their accuracy. Whereas if you're dealing with a real estate consultancy like Property Turkey mm. and other um, established consultancies, you have a much um, higher degree of assurance that the information contained in their website is up, up to date. Yeah. Because they have teams to do that, because this yeah. is their job. The listings that they have are not posted by third parties, are listings that are controlled by their own personnel. We do. Such as Property Turkey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, yes. do, we, do, we do have a team exactly dedicated for that, keeping all the Obviously. listings updated, providing uh, information. I mean, we, for example, me and my two friends here, uh, Fatih and Tugai, we're the video team. What I we know. do is that we create video content. And also, you should watch those videos, by the way. You know, I, I spend so many hours on making each and every episode of those videos. Well, Please actually, they're fantastic videos. You like them. And, and I think you're raising yeah. the bar each time. Yeah, because... I like the new thumbnails that you do with lovely yeah. little pictures. Check, check those new thumbnails. They, they are yeah, all, they're, 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 all they're, cool they're videos. Awesome. Yeah. They're awesome. Th th yeah. That's the video side. And, and for the website side, we also have um, another... Um, team good okay um so i think that's good enough for one have episode we, let's not have what? we addressed all his all, all the questions we did we did well we did. i hope we have and if we haven't please write in yeah okay my okay i'm closing the show now okay okay good all right straight talk episode two in this episode we covered three subjects number one was um what was the number one i forgot <laughs> See, we covered so much. We covered so much stuff that I forgot. Oh no, no, no. Okay, number one was what the hell was number one? Okay. Number one was commercial renter returns. Yeah, rent returns in South of, Africa. Uh, sorry, guys. Yeah. Because <laughs> You're always loud, anyway. <laughs> You're always loud. What can we do about that? Yeah. I want you to be loud, but not too loud. No, it's, it's okay. We appreciate it. That was Nez. Nez Jan. Uh, uh, Nez Abi, can you come back again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, 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 please. Fatih, can, can you put a name tag? Come here. Can you put a name tag? Here, please. Okay. This is Nez Jan, and that's his this title. This is not the military, okay. right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. All right. That's Sorry, good. man. I, I was a bit yeah. loud on the I was about to, <laughs> I was about to close the program. Can I do it?
Not get yourself out. Okay. <laughs> Straight Talk episode two from Property Turkey Istanbul Studios. We covered three subjects today. Number one was the rental yields of commercial um, real estate in Istanbul. Number two is how to understand if a real estate agent in Turkey or a company is fake or genuine. And number three was actually the number three... Interrupted by me. <laughs> yeah, interrupted by Nazavi. The number three was um, a good website, a good web portal for a uh, real estate search in Turkey. Actually, we never answered. I just laid right into these portals and I said, be See, careful with their accuracy. See, the but thing. I never answered the gentleman's question whether there is a good one or not. Is there a good one? No, yeah. there isn't in <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> well, propertyturkey.com. Okay, um, see you next episode. That's enough. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care, guys. <laughs>